Welcome back. We'll be looking at forces again today. And this is kind of a fun problem because we're going to be trying to find out what the uh, coefficient of friction is in a particular circumstance. And let me just go ahead and draw a little picture and I'll explain as I go. This is our situation. We have a man dragging a box on a road and it is with friction and he is dragging it at 40 degrees okay see that there so the rope that goes up to his hand is angled upwards and that compares to the horizon there and he is dragging it at a constant velocity and that will allow us to in interpret some things from from newton and our job is just to find that okay so before we do any of that, I'm going to, first, I'm going to move this vector over to the right and just make it bigger, and then we'll be able to analyze the uh, horizontal and vertical components of that. Um, I'm going to leave everything else where it is. I just wanted more room so you could see it better. So there's that same one, okay? This, this is that one just drawn over there. And now I will break up this into the horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so we get our little triangle there. We have uh, everything we need and we're going to make a list of this force, and this one, and this one. Later on we'll be using this one, but I'll, I'll show you what we can do with that later. So I want uh, several things written down over here that we can then use in our problem solving. And this is before you start to solve problems. You always need to make a list of what you know and what you can infer from what you know. Then you can attempt to solve the problem. So always draw a picture and then decide, okay, I'm going to get these little forces out. I'm going to draw them all out and here we go. So here's the very first one. We're going to find what this is and this is how we do it. Okay. Now it all comes down to these things right here. When you have a triangle, and I know this is new, so you'll have to get used to it. You've, you've looked at the trigonometry videos, so that's what we're going to be using. We have a triangle. We know this value, and we know the 40 degrees. So if we're taking the cosine of 40, and remember, it's just a number. It's a, it's a fraction if you think about it. It is the F1 divided by 60 newtons, okay? So if this were quickly replaced with F1, whatever that force is, we don't know yet, but we do know that F1 divided by 60 newtons is cosine 40 degrees, okay? That's what this part is, all right? And then you multiply it by 60 newtons. The 60 there and the 60 there take each other out, and all that's left is the F1. And cosine 40 degrees has a value that either your calculator will show you, sometimes you can look it up on a table, whatever. Now, I know that that's a little fast. You will get used to this. It takes time. But uh, let's just, I'll clean this up a sec, and then we'll go take the next step. I hope so far it's clear. If not, just rewind it a bit and watch it again. Because now we're going to go on to the next force that we need. We need that one there. And it's the same idea, except this time we're going to use sine. Because this was the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So the sine of 40 gives us F2 divided by 60 newtons. That's what this is. And then you multiply it by 60, and all that's left is the F2. Since we know this is, in fact, the ratio of those two. Okay, That's the, one of the powerful things about trigonometry. All right, so now we know what F2 is. Let's go on to the next one. Now, in order to get this, we have to consider something. We first has to have to think, okay, this box right here has mass. And before he starts pulling on this thing, let's say he just dropped the rope for a second, then the normal force would be that all by itself. But as soon as he starts to pull on the rope, something happens. Do you, do you see over here that we have the F2 and it's pointed upwards? That is causing the normal force, in other words, the the, the force pushing upwards on the box from the ground, okay? The box pushes on the ground, the ground pushes on the box, okay? 
that normal force is reduced by the amount that he is pulling up on that. Okay? If he were pulling completely horizontally, this force would be gone and the normal force would be just this. But as soon as he starts increasing the angle and pulling up, 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 the normal force goes down, down, down. Okay? So we have to take that into consideration. So first, we calculate what the normal force would be before he picks up the rope, and then we calculate it, the normal force, by taking into consideration that F2 is part of the equation. So the normal force before he picks up the rope minus the normal force once he is pulling on the rope, okay? And that's gonna be this one. Uh, so this would be the normal force before, and then we have the normal force after, okay? Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope so. And it's a lot to keep track of, especially when you're doing this for the, for the first time. All right. So the normal force is compensated for, and then we have our list of things that we need, all right? And now we can begin to think, all right, what do I need in order to solve for that? So let's get out our equation from our little formula book. There it is. And it says this, that the force of friction, this guy here, which of course opposes the direction of the motion, as friction always does, uh, is going to be the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Okay. Now, we know this, and we can infer something about the force of friction, and that's why I didn't put it in the little list yet, and that is this. Now, why do we know that the force of friction is the same as F1? Why do we know that? We know that because of Newton's laws, and that an object in motion that does not have any net force on it will stay in motion, or stay, stay still. If it's not moving, and there's no net force, it'll stay still. If it is moving at a constant velocity and there's no net force, then it will keep moving at that constant velocity. And that's our situation. So we actually know this because it says it is a constant velocity, all right? Right there. So once we know that, we can simply replace this one with this one. And we like that, so let's do that, because that makes it really easy then. Okay, so this is just a number that we already calculated. That's right there. This is the number we calculated right there, okay? All that's left is this. It's, this is the equivalent equation of saying, okay, 5 equals x times 2. Find x. It's that simple of an equation now, even though all you see are a bunch of goofy letters everywhere. This really is simple now. It's now it's just, you know, stuff you learned how, how to do when you were 10 basically. All right? So let's let's do that. Let's plop in the numbers. And now all we have to do is solve for mu, which is this green guy right there. So it can just stay where it is and we'll divide both sides by 138. Okay? So let's do that. So mu is 46 divided by 138 and that gives you 0 0.33. And there we go. So I know that's a lot to take in. It's a, a lot of things to keep track of. Um, but the important lesson here is draw a picture, label all the forces, calculate all the forces that are possible to calculate, and then make the inferences that you are allowed to make based on, in this case, Newton's laws. All right, and then you can solve it. Then it's really just kind of a piece of cake. All right, hope that helps. See you next time.